Hey everyone, Eric here. And today I wanna to share with you where to find some awesome high resolution render assets. And beyond that, not just where to find them, but how to bring them into SketchUp. So I know render assets sounds kind of vague. And I know that when you think about where to find cool, high quality models, you're probably thinking 3D Warehouse, good place to start. Also, if you're rendering with V-Ray like I am, Chaos Cosmos, I've done videos on that, another good place. So again, start there if you want, but I've found this source called Megascans. So you may have heard in my live streams when I do renderings that I might bring stuff in from Megascans. Now it's a little bit tricky because Megascans isn't really meant to go straight to SketchUp. Um, but there's a few with a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of patience, you can unlock uh, some really great assets uh, to use in your rendering. So I wanna show you an example of what I've done here behind me. Let me pull that up before I pop off my screen. I'm gonna show you this final product and we're gonna work backwards with how we achieved this result. So let's do it together. So this is the final rendering that I did. This was kind of a fun little thing I did during the pandemic. It was just a render challenge, just to kind of push some skills. And you can see that I did not actually model very much. It was mostly arranging pre-built assets. And I thought that was kind of fun because it was really allowing me to focus just on things like light and composition and stuff like that without actually having to spend a ton of time modeling. I was able to do this whole thing in about two hours start to finish. So let's come back to that because I wanna go into SketchUp and show you what it looks like in the model. So you can see it's actually quite a simple scene. If I click um, here and then here, I'll just turn those trees off and that guy so that we can focus just on the mega scans assets. Now I'm going to show you where they, um, I'm going to show you where to get them and how to get them into SketchUp here in just a second. But each one of these you can see is an individual component. So for example, um, the fun part that I had was just grabbing something like this stair set and then maybe even tweaking it a little bit scaling it, embedding it into the slope, and really kind of thinking about how these high quality assets um, would create sort of an interesting uh, landscape. In this case, I was going with sort of like a castle ruins in the forest. And you can see each one of these are an individual object, some rocks, tree roots, moss, broken concrete pieces to kind of give this indication of like this trail that's almost been unused for many, many years. So that's sort of the context. You can see these are the elements that I used, or at least these are the elements that I thought I would use. I don't know if I used each one. You can see a little castle ruin, castle wall, some stones, steps, and a lot of these are like tree roots that are coming out of the ground. You have to kind of zoom in to see them. And they're not super high detailed um, meshes. The cool thing about mega scans is this whole model is less than 2 million polygons. And that's because um, that's because what I'm using is mostly textures. So we're going to show you. I'm going to show you here how to use the combination of a low poly mesh. If I turn, let's see here. I can show you here, and then turn my edges on, and even turn on hidden geometry. You can see there's not that much information here, um, but a lot of the heavy lifting is done at render time when I pull in the high quality PBR materials and textures. So if you're into rendering, uh, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're new to rendering, stay with me, I'll walk you through it. So let's pause here. That's sort of the context of why I thought this process would be fun to share. But let's go back in time, uh, or should I say, let's leave SketchUp. This is actually current. This is the latest version of Quixel Bridge. So mega scans are by a Quixel, uh, company called Quixel which was acquired by Epic Games. So if you do use Epic Games software, you may actually get access to some of these assets specifically for Epic Games, but I wanna use them in SketchUp. So if you do have a subscription or if you wanna just play around, you can click on free and there are quite a few free assets. At least you can get a sense of what how it works. Now I'm not gonna spend a ton of time because I could get lost in going through these collections. I love I don't know why I love going through like the environmental stuff and thinking about how all these different pieces come together to create a realistic natural environment. My background's landscape, of course, you can do this too. They have some, if you go and see here, it's not always natural. You could also go and find some historic architecture or ruins or cyberpunk stuff. 
And these are actually scanned objects. So these go, they go out in the real world and they do high res scanning of real objects. So it's not modeled and that's going to give your, that's going to give your renderings a completely different aesthetic. There is a difference between something that is actually real and something that is modeled to look real. So let's just go ahead and find one. I don't know. The problem is my biggest thing is picking one. I'm going to go with Nordic Forest just for lack of uh, imagination. I love the mossy rocks. So let's go ahead and pick either a tree stump or a mossy rock. Let's grab a tree stump. So if you find one that you like, and this one I have not downloaded, so I just click download. Like I said, I want to walk you through the whole process from start to finish, including finding the asset and then getting it into SketchUp and then rendering it. So once that's done downloading, we can kind of pop out of here. We found what we wanted. And then I'm going to open up a new SketchUp file. So we're starting from scratch. And then I'm going to grab, you can see under here, if I go to 3D, this is from my Mega Scans folder. So all the stuff that I've downloaded, it's here. If I just kind of list and say date modified today, there's a natural tree. So you can open that file up and it comes with a few different files. Open that folder up. So it comes with some textures and it comes with an FBX with a few different levels of detail, zero all the way to five. So five being low detail, you can tell it's only 56 kilobytes, zero being a little bit higher, less than a megabyte, still a small size for a mesh. Now I can't just grab this and bring this into SketchUp. It's gonna say, mm, sorry, it's an FBX. I don't understand what you're doing. I'm gonna use an intermediary. It's an extension, it's a paid extension. I'm gonna create a new composition. It's called Transmuter. There are other extensions that you can use as well. This is just the one that I'm familiar with, the one that works for me. So if you do find yourself working with other file formats, especially if you're, um, again, if you have mega scans, you can send your mega scans bridge assets straight here to SketchUp, but it's a little bit complicated because it requires some pre-setup. But you can see Transmuter already has that relationship with mega scans established. So that's cool. In this case, you might find the more common way to do this is just to drag and drop. So I'm going to grab this level of detail 01 or 1, which is just a little bit less than the full resolution detail for this mesh. Drag and drop it. And you can see there it is. Now it comes up by default. It comes up sideways. I don't know why that is. I'm just going to switch the up axis from Z to Y so that it sits on the ground. And you can see the, the number of edges. It's actually not that many. So now I can change this by uh, simplifying the mesh, but in this case, it's already been simplified for me. I've already chosen the level of detail. What I do need to do before I bring it into SketchUp is I need to click over here on the Materials tab. So under Materials, it's basically going to say there is no material currently. It says your default material is just gray. Well, that's okay because it gives you the materials. So all you have to do is drag and drop. And I find this easier to do this here than later in V-Ray, the albedo goes over here to the color diffuse texture. The normal map goes over to the bump slot, but I'm just gonna switch this little slider to normal. And then I'm gonna come over here and find if there is a roughness, which is kind of shows whether it has any glossiness or not. You can drag and put that in the glossiness slider, but switch that from glossiness to roughness. Might give a little bit of shine like on the moss or the leaves where it's needed. And lastly, there is a displacement, so we can try that displacement and put that over in the displacement tab and see if that helps us. When you're all ready to go, you just click up here at the top right and say transmute. It's going to ask me where to save it, so I'm going to create a new folder. I'm just going to call this stump and call it whatever you want. And I'm going to save it there because when it saves it, it's going to copy all of those textures that I just did. It's going to save it to a new file. Pop over here into SketchUp. Grab this folder right here. You can see I've got this one that I did earlier, which is a pillar. That was just my test. And I've got another one called stump. And there is my SketchUp file. So I'm going to drag and drop my stump into my blank brand new file. And what it's going to do, it's going to remember all of those textures that I had um, associated with it. So I'm going to find a place. It doesn't matter, I don't think. Just put it there. And just because I'm going to render it, I am going to place a infinite plane. And that just makes it so that there's a ground that it sits on. And let's see what this looks like rendered. I'm going to, you can see in SketchUp, it's a little dark. Um, 
Same thing that I just we just saw on transmuter. If I turn my hidden geometry on, it's fairly, I don't want to say low detailed or low poly, but it's pretty light. And if we just double check the size, we can also come over here to st statistics and see that we're only about 30,000 total polygons, edges and faces, which is pretty good given the amount of detail in this awesome high res stump. So let's go ahead and check our render settings. Sometimes I like to turn progressive off when I do this, just so this runs a little bit quicker for a demo. And I do like to also choose match viewport. That just helps me and optional, but ambient inclusion, always fun. Who doesn't like ambient inclusion, right? SketchUp 2024 shout out. Let's go ahead and do an interactive render and see what this looks like. And there it is. I will add an exposure layer. I may pull my highlight burn down, my exposure up just a little bit. I think that just helps me see it better. I have to be careful that I don't blow out too many of my highlights here. And I'm gonna say that looks good. So let's kind of pan around and get in like really tight. It might be hard to see, but if I changed the shadow settings, for example, if I change the shadow settings, you can see like, watch here, you can see the detail of all of these little sticks and all of these little barks and all of these little pieces of, of the stump. You can see when you change the lighting, it's responding because of those PBR textures and materials. So again, if I change the lighting, I'm gonna get a different look and feel based on the way the lighting is hitting. So that's just time of day, but I can also try time of year, which gets my sun either high or low. And you can see here that all of these little cracks and bumps and stuff stay. And I love that because that's just that extra bit of realism that you're gonna get. So let me just kind of zoom out and again, kind of get a sense of that log there. So that's just one asset. You can see it took me um, start to finish it probably took me, what was that? Maybe five or six minutes. I'm a little bit slower when I talk. Maybe five minutes to find an asset, download it, transmute it, and import it in a sketch. Now that five minutes might sound like a lot, um, but once you have them, once you have them downloaded, of course, you've got this folder here. I'll come over here. You can see all these things. So anytime I want to come in here and say, ooh, castle stairs, I want to add that to my scene. If you've already transmuted it, you only have to do it once. You just come over here and pop it in it's going to take a second just because it's got to go and find all that information and then load the edges and the hidden geometry that i have turned on and there it is so now i've got not only do i have my stump as part of my render scene that i'm going to prepare but i've got a really really realistic looking set of stairs and again it just took me a couple minutes to get that loaded and SketchUp ready, and it's ready to go into my next piece of work or my next work of art. So I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to put the links in the description to both Megascans. If you want to try it out, like I said, there are some free assets that you can try. There's a subscription. If you want to only just subscribe for a little bit, for like a month, get a couple of assets and then call it a day. That's awesome. Of course, if you're doing this a lot, like you're rendering all the time, it may be worth the investment. Same thing with Transmuter. Um, it's a paid extension, so I want to be transparent there. But if you do have not just these FBX Megascans assets, but if you have assets coming from other sources, Transmuter is great for that as well. So it's not just limited to Megascans. I'm going to put a link to where you can find a little bit more about Transmuter as well. And, you know, I'm going to stop there. I showed you my rendering. Now it's time for me, for you to show me what do you use? What do you do with these tools and techniques that we share? Do you render still with V-Ray? Um, and if so, where do you get your assets from? I want to learn from you as much as I want to share the things that I've learned along the way. So I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say thanks, as always, for watching. If you learned something new, give us that thumbs up. If not, that's okay. Um, and we will see you either way. See you next time. Thanks.